Hi, this is Bren Antrim. I'm one of the librarians here at Santa Monica College. Today we're going to do a tour of a specific database, the Diversity Studies Database from Gale OneFile. In order to access the database, you have to get to the library homepage. From the college homepage, mouse over Student Support and find Library just after Counseling. The other way to get to this is to type in directly smc.edu slash library. Once you're at the library homepage, you'll notice that you have a number of options, and we have a tour of the website available for you on our YouTube channel if you would like to check it out. Today, however, we're going to go to a specific database and take a look at how this database works. <clears throat> if you've used databases at SMC in the past, this might look a little different, so I want to explore some of the special things about this database. When you click on databases, you'll notice that they are broken down by topic, by format, or with all of the databases listed alphabetically by title with a short description of what's in each database. Since I know I'm looking for a specific database, and this specific database has to do with social science, I can head directly into the social sciences social issues listing. <clears throat> Once I'm there, not all of the databases are listed. Those databases that will be most likely to have content for my research will come up first, and those that maybe have a little less direct connection but will still have information that could be useful would come up later. Any database that would not have useful information would not be listed. When I go here, you'll notice they're not in alphabetical order because they're listed by how useful they would be in this topic. Diversity Studies is linked here. If you've not used a Gale database before, it might look a little bit different, but you search right here the way that you normally would with any database if you know exactly what you're looking for. You can also go into an advanced search if you want to have a little more control over your search. But I'm not going to start there. I'm going to start on the home page because I want to show you some tools that this database has that others may not. The first is a topic finder. A topic finder is a way to graphically illustrate connections between topics and related topics. So if, for example, I know that I want to talk about transgender people and I want to talk about their rights in the United States, I can go to the topic finder, I can put in my topic, simple is better when you're first starting out, see what the database will give you. When you search it out, it can search a couple of different ways with your results. One is to show you tiles. The larger the title, the more times your topic comes up within it. The further away it is, the less related it is to your initial tile. My particular enjoyment of this tool is by using the wheel. The wheel to me makes sense when I look at it because it gives you the major topics and then the smaller topics coming off of them based on the direct connection between that subtopic and the element or aspect of that topic that it explores. So if I'm looking at Americans, I might be looking at transgender youth. If I'm looking at transgender rights, which I'm really interested in, I might be looking at LGBTQ, I might be looking at identities, I might look at discrimination, etc. But what I'm really interested in is broader than civil rights. I'm interested in human rights, specifically under transgender rights. And when I click on that, it will show me that we have 32 topics, which could be anything from an essay to an article to a blog post. <clears throat> and these are specifically not just on transgender rights, but on human rights for transgender people. So when I click on one, say, I want to look at this one. It will take me to the article. It'll tell me what it was published in, what it is, how long it is, when it was published. It'll give me the text with my search term highlighted. And it will link me to related articles. As you notice, they're all coming up in the same um, newspaper in this case. And it will tell me related subjects. So, for example, a couple of businesses that this is talking about being urged to stop anti-trans moves, particular groups it affects, even individuals. 
So that's one way that I can look, and then I can go back to my topic finder if I want to look at a different aspect, or perhaps I want to look at civil rights, or I want to look at LGBTQ. The other way that I can look at it is when I go into a topic, it will give me related subjects, and I can go into those related subjects, and it will give me a number of results, broken down by the format the results are in. 50 in magazines, 9 in academic journals, 43 in news, 2 in images, for example. I can then filter those results by when it was published, by what type of document it is, by the subjects assigned to those articles, even a specific publication title, or if I want to be more specific than the 50 magazines that I got and I want to search within those results, I can search within that for a topic and it will search only these results, not the entire database, and give me only those magazines, for example, and those academic journals and those news articles that include the topic of human rights as a subtopic within my original search. Okay. <clears throat> so that is how you use your topic finder. The other tool that is interesting in this database is a subject guide search. What the subject guide search has done is if you have a particular topic that is an assigned subject term, not just a search term that you've decided works, but a search term that the database understands as being assigned to a lot of specific articles you can use this subject guide. Now notice it gives you options. I'm going to pick transgender rights, which is a smaller category than transgender people and more specific to my search. And when I do that, it gives me 108 results specifically for transgender rights. And it gives me 236 in the broader category of rights for LGBTQIA plus people. If I look under my own term that I looked, it will give me smaller categories. So the political aspects, research, social aspects, safety concerns. And it will break down my results based on those more specific subdivisions. Then, again, it gives me an option of related subjects. The broader term, LGBTQIA plus rights. The related term, transgender people. And then I can look within those and find many, many, many more results as well. If I decide I want to, I can say, give me only full text documents, which means give me the actual document, not information about the document, like an abstract, for example. That cuts it down a little, but most of your articles in this particular diversity studies database will be full text. However, they include news, blogs, images, as well as academic journals. So if I'm doing a research paper for a History 11 class, for example, I might say, give me only peer-reviewed journals. That cuts it down considerably. So if I click on one, this gives me 90 articles, once again, Within these 90 academic journal articles, I can say, give me only those within the last five years. Give me only those that talk specifically about sexual identity or about employment discrimination. Give me only those that are articles. I don't want an essay, a report, an editorial, etc. If I have a specific publication, I can request it or I can search within this. This search is academic journals for transgender people and I'm looking for human rights within these 90 academic journal articles. It cuts it down to 38. So this sounds a little confusing when you're first trying to do it and if you get lost I highly recommend that you ask a librarian we have um, the option for you to speak with a college or university librarian 24-7 if you contact us during the hours that we are open, you'll talk to an SMC librarian. Outside of those hours, you'll talk to a librarian at another college or university in the consortium to which we belong. But the thing to take away from this is you have options and you have a very powerful tool that gives you information 
about a lot of different aspects of your topic. So if, for example, I decided I want this from the Journal of International Women's Studies, I click on the title for that article, and just like the previous article, it gives me an abstract, it tells me the keywords, and it goes into the article itself. Over here on the side, it gives me related articles. It gives me related subjects, and when I click on them, it will research the database specifically for that topic, so you'll have to reapply the limiters that we talked about just a little bit earlier. And if I like it, I can send it to myself, I can download it, I can print it, I can get a link if I need to for my citation, I can ask it to give me the database's approximation of a citation. When that happens, if, for example, I'm in a psychology class, I might want APA. If I'm in English, I might want MLA. So if I click on APA, this gives me the database's attempt at a citation. So I would copy and paste it into my references, and then I would use the example given to be my instructor to fix it so that it's correct. Once I'm done, I can go back to my results right up here and look for another article. And if I decide this really isn't getting me where I want to be, I can click on a subject that is related to it and begin again. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Good luck with your research and be well.